Hello and welcome to this Medic Mind video where today we're going to be covering the case study of Dr. Bauer Garber. My name's George, let's begin. So this forms part of a series of videos that we're running looking at NHS hot topics and this is to help you during your medical interview. And before we get started, why don't you pause the video now and jot down anything you already know about this particular case. If you don't know anything, feel free to continue with the video. Let's talk through it together then. So this is a timeline event which begins with the admission of Jack Adcock to hospital in 2011. And Jack Adcock was admitted to hospital with vomiting, breathing difficulties and diarrhoea. He has a background of Down syndrome and was a six-year-old boy. During hospital, he was reviewed by Dr. Bauer Garber, who was an ST6 registrar. Now, an ST6 registrar, it varies depending on speciality, but it basically means that they've done two years foundation doctor training plus an additional six years speciality training. Now, unfortunately, after Dr. Bauer Garber had administered him, had assessed him and had treated him somewhat successfully, somewhat not, he unfortunately passed away. Now, the reason he passed away led to a lot of court involvement. So it was widely reported that Dr. Balagava experienced gross negligence in terms of Jack Adcock's care. OK, so let's talk through this together. What mistakes were made by Dr. Balagava that led to the courts being involved in this particular case? Well, the first one was there was a delay in X-ray processing time. So the X-rays were made available for his chest at 12.30, but it was not reviewed by Dr. Balagava until 3 p.m. Now that could be argued to be her fault, but then equally no one was telling her exactly when these x-rays were available. As a result, there was a significant delay. Second, there were delays with the blood test results. So due to a technical failure within the hospital's computer systems, what's called the CRP, which is a measure of infection, wasn't reported until five hours after the test was done. There were also medication errors. So after being reviewed by Dr. Bauer she recommended that some of Jack's medications be stopped. However, this wasn't logged in the hospital systems, and as a result, the mum also had no awareness of what medications Jack should be stopping. As a result, these medications were administered to him as normal at 7pm that day. And finally, and probably most importantly to the case, there was a DNAR mix-up, and that's a do not attempt resuscitation mix-up. Now, when Jack went into cardiac arrest, Dr. Balagaba attended the scene, but she mistook him for another patient who was a DNAR patient. As a result, the resuscitation attempt was called off and Jack was allowed to die peacefully. Now, it was later realised that the mistake was made and resuscitation resumed. However, Jack eventually ended up dying anyway. Now, there are plenty of other issues to consider as well. Dr. Balagaba had recently come off maternity leave and therefore it could be argued that she was rusty or not familiar with the hospital systems. Second, there were hospital-wide failings. For example, a lot of the team was there, but only Dr. Bauer-Garber eventually took the blame. Third, there was significant understaffing, and it was rumoured that at the time Dr. Bauer-Garber was essentially doing the jobs of two doctors that shift. There was also a significant nurse shortage, and there was a problem with the nurse team escalating it. So the nurse team didn't escalate when Jack started deteriorating, and as a result, Dr. Balagaba arrived at the scene later than she would have done if the nurses escalated it quickly. There were also, as we mentioned, computer system errors. So that measure of infection, the CRP, wasn't repeated, or wasn't reported, sorry, until five hours later, and that was purely due to computer system errors. And finally, you've got to ask your question, whose responsibility is it? As we said before, Dr. Bauer-Garber wasn't the only one on the shift that day, and there were plenty of hospital-wide failings in terms of administration and in terms of result reporting. Okay, let's talk it through together step by step in terms of what happened next. So the first thing that happened in 2014, Dr. Bauer-Garber was sentenced for manslaughter. She tried to appeal against the decision, but her appeal was denied. And that led to a lot of outrage amongst healthcare workers who believed that they themselves could have done a similar thing. For example, the failings weren't entirely Dr. Bauer-Garber's fault. There were obviously hospital-wide failings as well. Also technical failings. So actually a lot of doctors believed a sense of solidarity was needed with Dr. Bauer-Garber. Despite this, she was still suspended from medical practice for 12 months. And that was done by the GMC. Now, the GMC actually appealed against the decision, tried to get her permanently removed from the medical registrar. 
but this was believed to be disproportionate to her original offence. However, the GMC pushed this and appealed it and actually got her permanently struck off the medical register. Now, as you can imagine, this led to even more outrage amongst junior doctors and more senior doctors, respectively. As a result, there was a successful appeal and actually the original 12 month suspension was reinstated. So she was allowed to practice medicine again after an entire year. And the idea behind this was that she would reflect on what she did wrong, apologize to the family, and after a year, she could come back to medical practice, essentially a better doctor. And as you can see, this case was all over the news, both in the public eye, as well as in doctor's eye. And a lot of doctors rallied around Dr. Balgaba. So here are some questions to think about this case. What are the consequences of the case? Should doctors be taken to court and stripped of their medical license? And what kind of medical error would allow someone to permanently be stripped of their medical license? It's also worth remembering in this case that actually the health secretary at the time, Jeremy Hunt, was under a lot of pressure to make doctors more accountable and actually look into doctors' performance. He was also under pressure to investigate every hospital death by a medical examiner or a coroner. That also accounts for a lot of the political and public attention this case received. Okay, let's do an MMI station together then. So pause the video now, read through the question and have a go for it for yourself. Okay, great, hopefully you enjoyed that candidate's answer. You can see that there are plenty of good points. For example, the candidate argues both for and against on both sides of the story. Giving an unbalanced viewpoint may lead to the examiner or interviewer think that you don't fully understand the case. The candidate also shows good awareness that actually medicine is quite difficult. It's quite difficult to be always right all of the time and actually shows a great degree of sympathy towards Dr. Baragada. The candidate also discusses reasons, other reasons why the GMC might remove someone's medical license and that shows an appreciation of wider healthcare. And finally, remember that it's important with this question to define exactly what is meant by a mistake. There may be one-off mistakes, for example, in the case of Dr. Bauer Garber, when technical failings meant that CRP, the infection marker, wasn't reported until five hours later. However, there may also be more system-wide failings in terms of not reporting, for example, the fact that Jack's medication had changed. Now, here you can see a mark scheme for this particular question. I'm not going to run through every single marking point in this example, so pause the video now and read through them for yourself. And here's our top tip of today's session. Remember that interviews won't necessarily require a prerequisite amount of knowledge. It's not like you have to tick off a number of case studies before you fully know what can be expected in a medical interview. The medical interviewer won't ask you directly what you know about the case of Dr. Bauer Garber. It's down to you to weave in your external knowledge into the questions that you are asked. For example, if you've got an ethical question about what do you know about the role of the GMC, you can talk about the case study of Dr. Bauer Garber and how the GMC helps to regulate doctors' performance, but actually it's a bit of to and fro and the GMC is open to revising its opinions and changing the verdicts that doctors receive. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and we've covered these three key learning points. First, we discussed who was Dr. Bauer Garber and what was the mistakes that she made. Second, we dug more deeply into those medical mistakes and examined which ones were exactly her fault, but also appreciated that this was a hospital-wide failing, not just the fault of one individual. And third, we looked at an MMI station where you can start to weave in this knowledge that you already know about Dr. Bauer Garber. Thanks for watching this video. Click below to subscribe and catch more of our videos. To watch our full online course and find out how you can enrol onto our award-winning program with personalised one-to-one tutoring, online weekly webinars and more, click here.